Hi, this is Kim Broadway from the University of Florida. I want to tell you a little bit about a piece, maybe that you've worked on or heard, called Yell Out for the Rain. I hear this piece a great deal in my teaching of high school students, and I've heard it a lot at state contests, at auditions. It's a wonderful piece that's been played since before I started on marimba, and probably be played long after I retire. So it has a lot of the elements of four mallet technique that we love to see in our developing percussionists. We love to see our vertical strokes, our lateral strokes, and our independent strokes. This piece does a little bit of all those things. I want to take a moment and kind of give you a little mini lesson on some of the things that I've discovered about this piece over the years. Some things I've seen students do that are really, really well done, and maybe some things that they can improve upon. So first of all, if you look at the notation at the beginning, a common problem I see with young students is they will play this first passage jump up. If you look at the notation in the stems, you notice that Mitchell Peters doesn't want us to play it that way. He wants us to move up. And that way we get set for our first theme of the piece. And we're not having to move so much. This next statement, we need to make sure that we don't start too loud because it comes back mezzo forte when the left hand takes over the melody. So if we start too strong, we don't have room for that. So for this particular portion of the piece, I play on the end of the bars. I try to make sure that I don't make a lot of jumping around. I want this melody to come out. And I also want to give it direction too. I don't want to feel like a machine. I want to make sure it has some direction at the soft dynamic. If my independent strokes aren't good, I need to make sure that I work on that technique before I play the piece so my outside mouth is not flopping along. So many times I'll play this as an exercise. over this phrase. The same thing when the left hand takes over. We want to make sure this technique is just as good as this technique. So slow it down and maybe really helps out a great deal, especially when we have to cross position changes with my left hand. I get in a position where my mallet can share that bar. Our next phrase we have we really have to watch our beating spot. We want to make sure that we're not getting over the node on the um, black notes, the B flat. natural inflection on the syncopation. And then we have to try to connect these rolls. You notice I'm not playing them really that fast. And I have to set up for the next phrase. I have to make sure when I'm standing here, if I'm too far to the left, I'll never get up to the right. So I want to make sure I take that step and then and again you see I'm playing on the ends of the bars. If you can get to the center, that's fine. But did you notice I was a little less accurate there? when I stay on the end of the bar in this phrase. And this is a good rule whenever I'm playing on marimba. If I'm moving towards the left, I'm trying to lead with the left hand. Lead with the left hand. Lead with the right hand. So I'm not really thinking 30 seconds on the rolls. I'm 
setting my metronome and trying to make sure. <laughs> section this is a place where I often hear inaccuracies with the left hand because we're not getting in a good position if you look at my elbow I'm trying to make sure I don't do it this way where I'm bending my wrist in an awkward position because that's where I tend to get nodes especially with the outside mallet mallet one so I'm going to make sure my elbow is in a good position and that really helps a great deal and again for me if I try to play in the center that is, but if I'm going to play at tempo, it's a lot easier for me to get good beating spots. The next phrase, use the outside mallet for the top note. The more you get up here, the farther you get from down there. So now I'm ready for this phrase again. That's a big jump. It's already a more difficult phrase <laughs> than you would think because of the motion you have to make. Make it as easy as possible. And practice that transition. So you can do it ten times in a row. Now we change a little bit because we're going to be up in the upper register for a while. So then I stay on the inside mallet. In this phrase... technique. We don't want to have the outside mallets flopping around. So this technique of playing scales, if you've not been playing your scales with your inside mallets, this is a great time to really work towards this technique. And then play each cell. So you play each beat, if you will, to the point where you feel so confident. Little accent to give it some drive. Then we get to. For me, since this is their favorite part of the piece, the lateral section, you want to make sure that you can play with a lot of power. The first part of it to me is the hardest section because of the transition. playing on the end. That way when you have a passage where you need to play on the end, you can do it with great confidence, or when you need to play in the center, you know exactly where that is with your muscle memory, your idiokinetics. I'm going to play on the end of the bar today. As I do this slowly, you see I'm trying to get this technique of these independent strokes as we alternate them.
here, we want to make sure as this rhythm changes and the speaking changes, we don't do the guitar too soon. <laughs> still feels like it's in time with other things. So I'm going to be stomping my foot on a feel here. So the retard is really the, the rhythmic augmentation, big word for saying the rhythm slows down, but the tempo doesn't. And many people will really slow down on that triplet. And I don't think that's the best way. I'm going to play it again for you. so well and then the part for many of us is, is very challenging this is where many students will slow down a great deal they'll play with incorrect technique and I recommend to students that first of all practicing slowly is the key here second a great way to practice this is to chunk it play each chord sometimes use when we have a decrescendo roll. We do that up on the ends of the sticks, ends of the mouth a little bit. It's a little softer up there. And we might even go towards the note a little bit just to help that diminuendo. I hope this little mini lesson has been helpful. Uh, please contact me if you have any other information or you want any other information. kbroadway at arts.ufl.edu. Thank you. <laughs>